How's it going, everybody? And welcome to, apparently, the good season of Bungo Stray Dogs. According to all of your comments, this season is when the show really kicks into gear. I didn't think the show was bad or anything before, uh, but I am very excited to know that things improve. That's very hype to me. I almost will never get into something if I know that, like, subsequent iterations get worse. The fact that this series apparently just gets better and better is a very big driving force to me, and I'm very excited to see how that plays out. Side note, I am very sick, so if I sound like the stuffiest boy on Earth right now, know that I am. All I need to do is get my PhD, and you guys could start calling me Doc McStuffins. And now... Onto the video. Sorry to wake you, Sensei. Ready for that sky sensei? Why'd you call him that? Dude, I'm not even kidding. We gotta cool it with all the sexy redheads in this show. You get one per anime, alright? The show's going way over budget here. I'm assuming you got those from the hail of bullets? Actually, it was my own fault because I had to pee. And in my rush, I tripped right into a ditch. And then the ditch beat you up? You've got a full bandage over your eye. Maybe you're better off in a wheelchair if you're tripping that hard. Ah, <laughs> oh, man. Isn't there some simple, reliable way for me to commit suicide somewhere? Literally all of your friends own guns. You couldn't have easier access to suicide tools if you worked for the NRA. Barkeep, one glass of bleach, please. We're all out. Oh, that's a shame. You're all out of bleach? Sounds like a dirty bar. You guys sure this guy's up to code? Oh, just a tomato juice. I have to drive. It's been a while. Oh, so you have tomato juice, but not basic cleaning materials? You're about to have the health inspector come down on your ass so hard, buddy. So it sounds like you fuzzed your job too, then. I fuzzed? That's right, we're fuzz buddies. Does I pick a love interest, you flirty bitch? So then, what are we toasting to? Anything you like. Who says we need a reason? To the Stray Dogs. Whoa, I didn't know the title meant something. I was just assuming this was one of those animes where the title was just like three random cool sounding words. You know, like Wonder Egg Priority. Why don't we take a photo to remember? Yeah, remember what? That all three of us were here together. The three of us come here to drink all the time. Wow, this guy's fun. He just wants to take a picture with his buddies. He's not asking you to commit a hate crime. Call it a silly hunch if you like, but I just have this feeling that if we don't do it now, we might never have another chance to prove we were all together like this. Okay, well that's suspicious as hell. If you're in a gang and one of your buddies is like, I have a sneaking suspicion we won't be seeing much of each other anymore. That dude's up to something. That's not a casual hunch anyone in the mafia just has. As it turns out, his hunch was correct. That was the last time that special friendship between the three of us was ever captured. Oh my god, that's so crazy and shocking. It's almost like nobody ever says shit like that. Boss, it's Oda. I'm coming in. Come on, Elise, just wear the dress, please. Oh, cool. Hate where this is going. No, I don't wanna. Come on, my dear, just try it on, all right? Jesus, what are you, a grasshopper? This girl's all leg. I appreciate you making the time to meet with me, despite your very pressing issues with that young lady. Oh, he's got issues regarding that young lady, all right? Look at Vlad over here. If this dude was a vampire, he'd be called Count Touchulots. And that is the worst joke I've ever come up with. Are you ordering me to reply as the leader of our organization? Not at all. It's just simple curiosity. Well then, I'd prefer not to answer. But, but please? Oh. Let me see the surveillance photos. You want some of this? Oh, I'll give it to you. I'll give it to you. They look like hoodlum. I know this dude's playing a video game, but I'd love to not hear this character make sex noises in the background of this entire scene. You little dog! Mr. Hirotsu. No shot, that was a racing game. Earlier, Dazai was playing it, and he was like, oh man, he dodged it. Dodged what? That's not a phrase anybody says when playing a racing game. Listen, you guys clicked on me, all right? I'm allowed to be as much of an asshole as I want. <laughs> that was so cool. Okay, this guy's my new favorite sexy redhead. Don't move. Yo, I would have fucking thrown up right on my shirt if that happened to me. If a dude shot bangs into my hair from behind, I would have pissed me little britches. I don't know how this guy didn't even flinch. That was like the scariest thing I've ever seen. Hey guys, you know what I just realized? My dumbass shirt is inside out. That's embarrassing. I don't know how I managed to wear a shirt with buttons inside out for so long, but... 
You know, I'm nothing if not impressive. Otosaku, duck! What was that, a Pokeball? Where'd all these dudes come from? Allow me. Huh. And voila. He's sure clever with his hands. This is the only correct ship in the show. All others are invalid. So his umbrella was wet because it was raining. What's odd about that? What's odd is that he supposedly commuted to his appointment in his car. So when did he have a chance to use his umbrella? The detective work in the show is always insane. This is such a leap to make. There are literally hundreds of reasons this man's umbrella could have gotten wet. The umbrella was more than lightly used. It had to have been soaking in the rain for a good half hour or so. Dude, I guarantee an umbrella soaking in the rain for two minutes will look the exact same as one soaking for 30. I feel like an umbrella reaches maximum wet after like 40 seconds of being in the rain. But for being out in the rain for so long, neither his shoes nor his pants showed any evidence of it. Yeah, because he was under an umbrella. This is not evidence. Stop. Can you see? The glimmer of pure joy in my eyes. You mean I? My only fear is the possibility that you'll miss your target. But you won't, because you're a sniper. Yeah, sniper with his eyes closed. Only one out of four eyes involved in this situation are actually looking right now. I knew that he'd miss. His left cheek had the imprint from his sniper rifle, meaning he was left-handed. He was using his non-dominant hand. Yeah, and the gun was also six inches from your forehead. I'm pretty sure a steamed vegetable could have hit you at that range. How's the curry today? Same as usual. How's your face today? You sure you want to trust food cooked by a guy who doesn't even have a mouth? I've got you now, buddy! Oh, it's an ambush! Take cover! Why is this dude being assaulted by the cast of a rejected four kids anime? Why is a new intro like an avant-garde masterpiece? This looks more like a five gum commercial than an anime opening. In that case, it's time for some mafia-style torture. <laughs> Kid is absolutely done for. Dude doesn't stand a fucking chance. That's an expert-level interrogation technique. There isn't a soldier alive that could withstand that kind of torture. We're gonna get you next time for sure! Is this like a weird Digimon crossover? Like, why do all these kids look like protagonists of a different show? But considering the group we're dealing with, wouldn't this be a matter for the government? You're referring to the Ministry of Home Affairs secret department, yes? Yeah, sure, whatever, the government. What is the secret Ministry of Home Affairs? Get out of here with that Harry Potter shit. <laughs> Yo, Japan loves pretending that terrorists dress like medieval cultists. No actual criminal is ever dressed like this. Can you imagine you're gambling at the casino, and then all of a sudden a bunch of Kingdom Hearts villains bust in? He was very opposed to the idea at first, but he eventually saw great value to the Port Mafia in keeping such detailed records. What's going on right now? Is this whole season a flashback? I didn't spend 12 episodes getting attached to that wiggly-ass were-tiger just to get thrown into a different time period. Can't do that! Hey, Yodasaku, I think I know just how we can get him to leave early. If we hug him real tight. Is this actually how the Port Mafia tortures people? I was joking before. Why is this the softest criminal organization in Japan? One of them committed suicide, but we were able to secure the others and bring them here. We had planned to interrogate them about their other members. Aw, oh, damn, you mean you didn't get the chance to tickle them? Damn it, such valuable information lost to time. Uncover information. Do you really think that I would go through the trouble? <laughs> Oh wow, Dazai got a full wind-up on that one. I'm surprised that didn't kill Octagawa. The last time he got hit like that, it broke every bone in his body. Wow. <clears throat> Ugh, there he goes again, using his useless baby bitch boy power. How many times have I told you? Your powers have far greater use than that of a simple butcher. Oh, what the hell? I thought they were useless. I was quoting you, asshole. All of these could be clues. Come on. Being in the Port Mafia means more than just knowing how to beat someone to death. I haven't seen anybody in the Port Mafia beat somebody to death. All I've seen you guys do is wiggle your fingers menacingly at each other. I can handle things by myself. Clearly. Allow me to deduce why you're in this position right now. Please don't. I'm nervous the answer is going to be far kinkier than you think. Mimic found out you were a spy, didn't they? Uh, how did you- Everyone in the Port Mafia believes that you're a spy for Mimic. Actually, I'm not a spy for anybody. 
I just like being tied up. I'm ashamed, but still fully aroused. <laughs> God, this guy makes seeing the future look so cool. I love the idea of a character who can see the future seeing one with no possible way out. Like, I know this guy dodges the explosion, but it'd be so cool if he saw that and then was like, oh, so I'm fucked. What's that? Aw, little puppy wants to play. Aw, little puppy wants to play dead. It's poison. Oh, hey, look, that thing I said I wanted to happen. My ability, flawless, allows me to see several seconds into the future. However, it can't help me if I've already fallen for the trap by the time I sense the danger. Well, pretty pretentious name for an ability that literally just failed you. Also, if there's gonna be a however in the middle of your explanation, then I'd say the ability's not very flawless. Odesako. Everything that I told you about Mimic just now is the truth, every last bit of it. Oh, this dude was a quadruple agent! Damn it, this is why you should have tickled him when you had the chance! Are you aware that there are people who actually think you guys use your special abilities to seduce women? This is your final dying memory? The last thing you want to remember is this dude canceling you at a bar? Yeah... They don't understand that even if we wanted to, it wouldn't work. Oh yeah, Dazai's incredibly sexy ability of turning people off and this dude's ability of knowing when he's gonna die. I'm sure those would work great in the bedroom. Sorry, Dazai. Oh, looks like I fussed up. Oh no, wait, that got so sad completely out of nowhere. No, come on, dude, it's just poison. Little bit of poison never killed anybody. Just ask Socrates. Oh, he did die? And that is episodes one and two of season two of Boongo Stray Dogs. I'm hoping it's not all flashback. <laughs> it was cool. I liked this character, unfortunately, considering he just got poisoned to death. Um, however, I am partial to the plot moving forward rather than backwards. But let me know in the comments what you guys saw in this video and which season of Boongo Stray Dogs is your favorite. And I will see you guys next time. How was I supposed to know? Dazai is 16 in these flashbacks? Go to hell. In my last video, I made jokes about shipping Oda and Dazai together, and a lot of you were quick to rush to the comments and let me know that in these flashbacks, Dazai's like 16, and Oda's apparently like 24. In my defense, Dazai hasn't aged a day in like four years. Furthermore, Dazai flirts with anything with a pair of legs on it. And that's only because this show hasn't introduced any amputees yet. Okay, at this point, I just assume anytime Dazai is talking to somebody attractive, it's a new love interest. But you know what? You guys are right. I never should have strayed away from my original Kunikita Dazai shipping. Now, with all of that out of the way, let's get back into the show. You're always reading that same book, boy. Hmm? Is it really that good? I swear to God, if this guy's reading No Longer Human by Osamu Dasai, my head's gonna freak out. My brain won't know what to do with that information. I'll, I'm gonna completely trip out. Well, now it all makes sense. Because, because the, the third, third installment is the worst of the worst. Oh, never mind. He's reading Divergent. Just, Just forget, forget about the rest. I can't do that. Why don't, don't you write it then? Who's this mysterious man trying to pressure this kid into writing fan fiction? This guy just wants to find out what happens to Triss and Four. Leave him alone. From my vantage point, you have all the right qualities. Just who are you anyway? Oh, so he actually doesn't know who this guy is? If a guy walked up to me at a cafe and was like, I see you're reading the second installment of a series. You should write the third one. I'd be like, first off, that sounds like a lawsuit waiting to happen. I don't know you and you're making me very uncomfortable. And if you don't get away from my table in the next six seconds, I'm going to scream! <clears throat> Good, Good to, to see, see you awake, awake Otisaku. Oh my god, he survived? Whoa, what? Everybody told me that this season starts off super sad. What, what, was him dying not the sad bit? He's, He's a, a naked, naked sword without a scabbard. scabbard. In time, I have no doubt he'll become the strongest member in the Mafia. But right now, he needs to be taught how to sheath his blade. Are you going to have sex with Octagawa? Listen, sheath his naked blade all you want. Just make sure it happens off screen. Gods are the weapons of fools. 
they're the fools? Your mullet has frosted tips and you're wearing a bib. You really want to go around talking about who does and doesn't look foolish? Who are you? You may call me Jade. Jade? Dog, I'm gonna be calling you for dinner. Where did this case study of Vanita's character come from, and why is he not on screen every second? First question. The ability you possess. Is it sufficient enough to release our souls from the prison of original sin? To release our souls from the prison? What are you asking him? Oh wow, nice double Lugers. I gotta be honest, that is not what I was expecting to be underneath that cloak. No way is this one of his abilities. Yeah, this man's ability is two guns. Get used to it. Farewell. <laughs> Yo, that was embarrassing, dude. How'd you let your two guns get shot? Are, Are you, you able, able to, to walk? walk? <laughs> what do you, you think, think you're, you're doing? doing? Does it even matter if you're just gonna toss him over your shoulder like that? Asking him that question and not waiting for an answer was more insulting than you throwing him over your shoulder. I heard about you from Tazai and came to help. <laughs> Am I the only one who thinks Octagawa is like a total brat? Can somebody just kill this kid already? The only thing he has going for him is his stupid power. Tell me. Just does, I acknowledge me! No way. This is our intimidating antagonist? Dude just got the wind knocked out of him mid-notice me, senpai. I simply saw a future where you would dodge to the right, so I proceeded to adjust my aim. But it would seem that you saw that future as well. Oh my god, this is a standoff against two guys who can see a little bit into the future. So they're just at a standstill? Neither of them can actually do anything? That's hilarious. What kind of mafia member are you? One that doesn't kill people. Guns are tools for killing people. This guy makes an excellent point. Life is nothing compared to the glory of death! This matchup is so funny. This is like in Sherlock Holmes, where Sherlock and Moriarty have to play a full game of chess in their minds before either of them can throw a punch. Someday, when I can quit the Port Mafia and become a free man, I'll find a quiet room, one overlooking the sea. Zero chance this guy survives these flashbacks. Dude just signed his death certificate with that sentence. <laughs> So not worth it. Stop this! A bulletproof vest, huh? <laughs> How many times is this guy gonna fake die? That's the second time this show tried to trick me into thinking he was dead, and this is his third episode. How long do you, do you think, think this conflict, conflict will last? Mimic's army aside, their leader's ability is a nuisance. Easy, Dazai, you're standing right next to a guy with the exact same ability. Dazai's just like, oh, oh, but not you. Come on, you know I don't mean that. I, I got tons of friends with that ability. Of course, <laughs> where else? Hey, hey, you guys. guys. I, I started, started without, without you. Oh, what the hell, show? In the first episode of this season, didn't Oda say that that would be the last time the three of them would be seen together in this bar? Right? That's exactly what he said. Oda literally told me this wouldn't happen. Cases have proven to be quite rare. You know, I'm really not supposed to be here telling you two any of this. I know, that's what I'm saying. I'll have to go underground for the time being. <laughs> that's cute. You think we're gonna let you walk out of here alive just like that? Oh right, I forgot Dazai's in the Mafia right now. For a second I was like, Jesus, Dazai's threatening to kill this dude? And then I was like, oh yeah, there's a point to all these flashbacks. This is how it's always been for me. Everything worth wanting is lost the moment I obtain it. And nothing I pursue is worth the cost of prolonging this life. Jesus Christ, that's heavy. Hey, come on, buddy, it's all right. You want to go attempt a suicide? That always cheers you up. No. <gasps> hey! Oh, nice dual frying pan technique. No wonder you got killed. What, were you going to scramble the bad guys to death? Most of your customers are mafia members. You don't keep a shotgun under that counter? <laughs> Suck it up! 
A map. That is the most map-ass map I have ever seen. That's like a straight-up topography map. How is he supposed to read that? That's like when you get a treasure map in a video game and it's like just some obscure corner of a castle or something and you're like, yep. Oh yeah, I'll never find this shit. <sighs> 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 Oh my god, they just blew up the van full of children. Look, seeing a van full of stolen kids is never a good sign. Um, but typically, you know, they don't explode. Somewhere in the distance, I heard someone screaming. Eventually, I realized the reason my throat hurt was because I was the one who was screaming. Oh, that was sick. That was like one of the coolest inner monologues I've ever heard. Not anymore. I can't write a story anymore. This is like the perfect reason to write a story. You're telling me you just had your best friends kidnapped and murdered and you don't immediately want to write a crime thriller about it? If anything, this is the perfect reason to stop being in the mafia and become an author. I mean, come on, man. That's just a waste of a good murder. Good night, Kosuke. Oh, this is so hype. Oda's entering his emo era, and I'm so ready for it. Dude just loaded two magazines into his leather cuffs. Guy's either about to go on a murderous rampage or a My Chemical Romance cover tour. Good night, you. Look, I know you is a very common name in Japan, but I do like to imagine he just forgot that kid's name. Good night, Katsumi. Good night, Sakura. Good night third kid. I know what you're thinking right now, but you can't do it. Even if you did, it wouldn't bring the kids back. I don't know, it might bring the kids back. This is a pretty magical ass world, you know? Like, for being honest, who knows? I thought that being around it would help me find my own. My dream was to become a writer. I like how Dazai's just like, oh, okay, cool, I guess we're talking about your dream now. I was afraid that if I ever killed again, I'd lose that future forever. Dude, I'm telling you, killing people can only improve your writing skills. Imagine reading a crime thriller by a guy who has actually killed people. <laughs> This is the last flashback episode, right? Like, I want to go back to seeing somebody from season one. Hey, what's a big idea, huh? Somebody other than Ronpo. I am the best detective the world has ever known. You'll take me seriously once you experience my ability. Rompo really never has anything better to do than brag about himself, does he? In all honesty, Rompo is growing on me. I low-key love his voice actor, and he's like, just the right type of annoying to be endearing. Let's see. I know the two of us have only just met, but it's very unwise to go where you're headed right now. I like how Rompo puts on the glasses and is just like, just wait until I show this jerk my ability. Oh, you're going to kill people. Yo, an assassin who can predict his own death is such a cool idea. And you know, honestly, it even make for a great book. But if it dies, but if it dies, it bringeth forth much fruit. Gospel of John, chapter 12, verse 24. These two are Christian now? Nice, you guys can start your own little church group. You can sit around discussing the Bible while you both predict how the other one's gonna kill you. Oh my god, this is literally the chess match thing I was talking about. I do wish these weren't flashbacks because I know Oda's gonna die at the end of this. No chance Oda survives the end of this episode. The show's been grooming me for his death since the beginning of this season. Our organization would benefit immensely with this in your possession. A gifted business permit. Oh no, not a gifted business permit. Oh geez, didn't realize we were dealing with true evil over here. They have matching bracelets! Guys, come on, screw all this fighting shit. I say you two start a band. My dream was to become a writer. A man told me long ago that was my true calling. He gave me a very rare book. Yeah, and he told you it sucked. Then why don't you write it? Just before the missing section in question. Oh my god, wait, is this old man the author of the book? I'm gonna be furious if that's the case. 
Not because it's a lame twist, but I'm gonna be very upset it took me until now to realize. My name is Suiseki Natsume. That's right. He had the same name as the author of the story I loved. God damn it. That's so obvious. I'm so angry. You were perfect. Even your very last shot was sublime. Oh, did Oda not die? Oh, nope, there we go. Whether you're on the side who kills people, or on the side that protects them, you won't find what you're seeking. Jesus Christ, everybody's so fucking sad in this show. This started off as such a happy show about an unloved orphan teaming up with a suicidal... Wait a minute. If both sides are the same to you, then become a good man. Protect the vulnerable. How about some orphans? Oh yeah, because helping out orphans worked out so great with you. Here's some better advice. Kill yourself. Stay away from orphans. You son of a bitch! You weren't hurt at all! I have a feeling you'd like him. <laughs> Will I be able to save people? And thus starts Dazai's time in the detective agency and ends our time in these flashbacks. I'm assuming Oda's real death is the sad bit everybody was warning me about. The only problem with that is I'm so cynical that just by virtue of these being flashbacks, this guy was dead on arrival for me. On top of that, I'd already felt pretty sad when he had his little monologue saying he fuzzed up in the second episode, and I'd come to terms with the fact that he died then. So then, when it turns out he didn't, and then he gets shot, and then I briefly was like, oh my god, he kills himself for Atagawa, and then he doesn't die there, and then he dies here at the end, I've like, all of my sympathies had already been drained out by then. I am very excited to get back to the present day. I just like generally don't love flashback stuff, but it is unfortunate that Oda died because that guy's so cool and I love his ability. I love how it's not broken or OP because it just keeps him alive. Like he can't just see any future. That's super cool. I really like his look. I really like his personality. Definitely sucks he's out of the cast now. Thankfully, I do like the rest of the cast though. So I'm excited for more. Let me know what you guys thought of this little uh, mini flashback arc in the comments below, and I will see you guys next time. How's it going, everybody? Welcome to me, the show where I. We're back watching Bungo Stray Dogs, and we're finally out of the flashback realm. I'm super excited to see what everybody's been getting up to since we last saw them at the end of season one. So without further delay, let's get into it. Actually, wait, no, one more delay. Um, if you like this video, make sure you leave a like on it. Also, leave a comment on it. YouTube's vicious right now for all creators. So, whether it's this video or a video that you liked from another creator you like, make sure you leave a like if you want to help support them. Engagement is super big right now, probably because YouTube likes watching me beg. Now, let's get into it. Is it true that she was an orphan before the Port Mafia took her in? Yeah, and there's more to it than that. It says her parents were killed. So not only was she an orphan, but she doesn't have parents either. Sorry for the wait. I have your case ready. I also got you this stun gun just in case. Welcome to the team, kid. Here's your Glock. Wait, how old are you? 13? Better give you the stun Glock then. All you have to do is deliver this envelope of evidence to a judge in court. Oh, this is what he looks like. Understood. I've memorized his face. Wait, actually bring it back. I forgot his face. You're really into this. Is it cause it's your first job? No. What, did you run a lemonade stand or something? The first job I ever had was infiltrating a building and assassinating two people. Or lead SEAL Team 6? No luck. The judge isn't picking up. Guess there was some miscommunication. It looks like we'll have to do something about that guard. It seems like very normal procedure for getting into a courthouse. I just don't think we have to go all Agent 47 on this guard here. Kill him? <laughs> Definitely don't kill him. <sighs> First, I'll use my charms to lure him into an isolated area. Definitely don't put this guy on a sex offenders list. All this guy did was ask for you guys to fill out a permit. Why are we about to get him restricted from every school zone in Japan right now? Oh, sick, we're doing a non-lethal Agent 47 run. 
Jesus, thank God you guys gave her the stun Glock. What the hell? I thought you memorized his face. Even I remember this guy. Here. <laughs> nice ice cream bouquet, Atsushi. What are you, trying to give her diabetes? It was all going well until that last part. Really? Just the last part? To be fair, that was a lot better than what she wanted to do to those guards. I see you're still holding on to that phone. I had the service provider make some changes. Isn't that the phone that summons a demon? Did you get it to stop doing that? Is that the change you made? I wasn't aware Verizon offered that as a service. You could use it for the agency instead of- I won't! <laughs> I'm never using it again. Ten minutes ago, you were willing to seduce and murder a security guard in a public court office. Oh, but summoning a samurai ghost to do it for you is going too far? Demon Snow. <laughs> Punish those who would dare teach Kyoka a world of lies. <laughs> <laughs> That one's on you, Kyoka. You have the world's shittiest phone. Her phone just blasts voicemails at full volume the second she gets them. What's even the point of having a voicemail if that's the case? The immense pain of knowing my sweet child was out there amongst animals like this. Don't worry, this is hardly Atsushi's first time getting stabbed. The weird thing is, I'm not even making a sex joke. She's not going back to the Port Mafia with you. She's decided that she wants to use her strengths to work with us at the agency. Yeah, Atsushi, I'm sure this woman really cares what Kyoka wants. Oh, she cares a ton! Not fast enough. A second demon? What the hell? Where did this one come from? Nobody made any calls. What, did this one get a fax that said kill Atsushi? She has been blinded by the light. Blinded by the light that you showed her. But luckily, all is not lost. Oh, nice sword umbrella. That's just practical killing right there. That way, when you slice somebody's throat, you won't get wet. <laughs> well done, my dear. That's a laugh of somebody trying not to let anybody know that they're actually in a ton of pain. No, nice, great job. Awesome work, Kyoka. I never saw it coming for a moment. I've seen the world of light. <gasps> and I refuse to go back to a time where it doesn't exist. Oh shit, Kyoka's switching over to AT&T. Get ready for this mobile coverage, bitch. <laughs> Finally, you reveal your true nature. You kill anyone who dares stand in your way, just like a demon. You're wrong! My Kyoka, so violent. All I did was stab Atsushi. Do you know why I know this? There was a woman who also sought the light, but it burned her and she fell into darkness. Well, way to not change wardrobes or hairstyles in the past 20 years. We get it, you like pink. Maybe take a step outside of your comfort zone, lady. You used it to kill your parents. <laughs> Why? Why, Kiyoka? Oh my god, Atsushi, now is not the time to start getting judgmental. Go one episode without having your wiggly ass turned into a shish kebab, then you can start high-roading people. Are you okay? Mr. Kunikita, why are you here? I made some adjustments to Kyoka's phone. It notifies me when someone tries to call it. How about you make an adjustment so that nobody can call it at all? Who cares if it notifies you? It took you guys like 20 minutes to get here. Why are you acting like some kind of damsel in distress? You're a were-tiger. Grow some were-balls. Agency vermin. You don't forget the stab wound? How's that fucking burn feeling, Atsushi? Grow a were-pair, my guy! That's what I've been saying this whole damn time! Uh, well, isn't this just great timing? It's like the split second before a collision. If we had come a little bit later, we would have had it easy. Why are there so many Midwestern farmers in this show? But all the stairs are making me uncomfortable. Oh, fine. I guess I'll get out there and earn my keep on behalf of the guild. Grapes of Wrath? I'm so tired. I'm really itchy. So tired. HP Lovecraft? Oh, this is hype. I didn't think I'd recognize so many authors in this show. Have mercy on the wicked. Oh, or they're all just gonna get murdered. You guys couldn't beat Lovecraft? Middle schoolers read his books. Next, you're gonna tell me J.D. Salinger is the final boss. Even so... I'll think about trying on that dress you bought me earlier if you let me. 
<laughs> you want seconds? This is the worst addition to this show. Boss. Oh, thank God, Chewie is interrupting whatever the hell is going on here. We received word that the agency got to the scene ahead of us and took Koyo with them. Interrupt harder, please! I ask that you leave this matter to me. <sighs> but... Don't worry, I've got this. This show will do whatever it takes to keep Atsushi out of the plot, won't it? It's like it regretted writing Atsushi into it four episodes in. Don't tell me you've forgotten how I used to fill in for your subordinates who were classified as torture specialists. Oh, I've seen how the Port Mafia tortures people. This girl's got 15 straight minutes of finger wiggling coming her way. <laughs> Can you recall a single instance where a hostage didn't talk after I asked the questions? I'm sorry to say, this won't be very pretty. What, did you think I was joking? Also, what is this? Dazai's a torture specialist now? What? Dazai was the poster child of your classic Tumblr anime boy in like the first four episodes. What, what happened to him? This is the kind of character I'd expect to see in sticker form on a college freshman's laptop. Now he's about to torture a woman? Hold on, I have visitors. Sir, what's going on? Jesus, dude, you get some intense visits. Try and grab hold of my hand. You'll see why. Yo, get flipped, bitch! Kunikita's like, grab my hand. What the fuck are you doing trying to touch me? You know you're in trouble when somebody says try to grab my hand instead of grab my hand? When I was just a boy, I worked for two years in order to afford a gun like this. When I couldn't, I killed four people. That's like a $500 gun. You could get that working two weeks at Starbucks. Honestly, I don't even know how killing four people would get you the gun. Wait a sec. How did you kill them without the gun? Your story's not adding up here, F. Scott Fitzgerald. Maybe you should ask your wife to fill in some of the details. What a pious minister you are. Then I'm sure you must love this verse. And to dust you shall return. Not really a verse, more like half of a sentence. She just ruined this man's whole book. I've never seen a more petty thing in my life. Can you imagine if you were reading a book and you were like, excuse me, do you mind moving? You're standing in my light. Oh, I am? Well, how do you like this? The joke was not worth the mess or the irreparable damage to my hairstyle. It is my sacred mission to see judgment as dealt to the wicked. I welcome the enemy to come at me. They will atone for their sins, even if it's at the cost of their lives. Nathaniel Hawthorne? Oh, never mind. Fuck this guy. Scarlet Letter? More like write better. Did you guys know that I almost became an English teacher instead of pursuing a career in filmmaking? That's true. That's 100% true. I loved reading. I loved analyzing books. I loved discussing them in class. And then I read The Scarlet Letter my senior year of high school and vowed that I could never be a part of a system that forced children to praise this piece of shit. That is my very real villain origin story. The full list of these aforementioned assets are as follows. <laughs> First, your luxury liner, the Zelda. Nice, at least F. Scott Fitzgerald's wife is getting the respect she deserves as a boat. And strengthen security around the ship. What are you doing? That letter is nothing more than a silly prank to scare us. Oh yeah, those damn pranksters over at the Port Mafia. Remember when they pranked that train last season? Mr. Hawthorne, sir. Hmm? Hmm? There's something you should see. Oof. Oh, this is the guy that pranked the train! Oh my god, their boat was about to get so pranked! Ooh, is that who I am now? Where is this place anyway? I understand the armed detective agency recently stopped you from bombing a train. Um, no they didn't. That train got so bombed. The scarlet letter is the word of God. It penalizes the immoral and brands a mark on them that Wait, never fails. Right. Oh god, now everybody's gonna know this guy's a whore. You've clearly underestimated us. <laughs> Why did you brand him if you were just gonna throw a grenade in his face? I just feel like he could have saved yourself a lot of blood if he started with that. The only language that allows us to understand the universe that God's created is science. <laughs> and now the brand's gone too! What do you do, Nathaniel? Well, I'm glad this Hawthorne's just as much of a blowhard as the real one. But my true gift is the ability to receive absolutely no damage from lemon-shaped explosives! Oh yeah, what a gift. How did you even discover that ability? I want a full episode dedicated to this man's trial and error process, finding out lemon-shaped grenades don't hurt him. 
your ship. Just who was that man? It appears that letter was no mere prank. This was a pretty successful prank. <coughs> the sea breeze is suffocating. Is Nathaniel Hawthorne really about to die right now after contributing nothing to the plot, having a power with no entertainment value or substance, and providing themes a child could understand? God, I fucking hate you, Nathaniel Hawthorne! How are you feeling, Irma'au of the Guild? Not great, I've just been stabbed. Terrible. It's like I've had a run-in with Satan himself. May I ask you your name? Call me Diablo. Shut up, Octagawa. <laughs> then this must be Mount Hermon. Shut up, Nathaniel Hawthorne! Why couldn't we have Arthur Miller instead? The Crucible bangs! Is his ability mid-range matter manipulation, both offensive and defensive, it's very similar to my own. I like how they didn't even try to make the powers relate to the books the authors are known for. Mid-ranged matter manipulation, both offensive and defensive, is not really what comes to mind when I think the Scarlet Letter. If you really wanted to stay true to Hawthorne, they should have had his power put Octagawa to sleep, you fucking hack! Okay, unless... God, you're really gonna make me analyze Nathaniel Hawthorne right now? So it's this abstract matter that I guess, like, brings shame onto Hester, and so that's defensive. But then towards the end of the book, doesn't she end up being more confident about it and wearing it as like a symbol of pride? So that would transform it into offensive? What if they had him summon a little girl named Pearl? Who would like try to hurt him and the more damage he took from Pearl, the stronger he would become. You know, like that scene in the Scarlet Letter where Pearl is just like throwing brambles at Hester. Or when he marks people with the A, it like signals Pearl to go attack them. Anyway, whatever, I'm doing more work than this character deserves. The one, one whose ability holds the most promise will win! Rashomon! The Scarlet Letter! Is this show making the bold statement that Rashomon is way better than the Scarlet Letter with that? <laughs> Now. Why does Octagawa remind me of Dib from Invader Zim? This man is a ruthless killer from the Port Mafia. And yet deep down, he pines for something to soothe his soul. And yet deep down, he's actually a whiny little bitch. I'll be honest, I do wish people would get stabbed less in this show. It really takes the impact out of characters getting injured when everybody's leaving a fight with seven holes in their body. Uh, Margaret. Margaret, what are you doing? Why are you sacrificing yourself for this guy? Gone with the Wind is actually good. Yeah, it's long as hell, but at least things happen in it. Ah, Naomi, how long have you been there? I've what are you doing? Uh, Working, really, I wouldn't be slacking off on the company, not mm -hmm. me. <laughs> no way. Oh, hey, my girlfriend's in this show. That wouldn't happen to be the guild ship, would it? What caused the explosion? I'd make a bet it was that one guy who loves explosions. Hey, you think? Give me a real challenge. What should we do? I don't know. Go beat him up. <laughs> oh, come on. Only two of you? Yeah, like, was there really ever any other option? Sorry, but this might hurt a little bit. This is exactly what a job ought to be like! Woo! Kenji, don't go getting smitten on me now. Back off, dude. This love pentagon doesn't need any more angles. Uh, what the? You're Chuya Nakahara. You're the man who can manipulate gravity, aren't you? I'm gonna need you to elaborate on that one. Earlier, this guy took out three turrets before they ever had the chance to shoot him. How? Gravity? And that is episodes... Whatever these episodes are of Boongo Stray Dogs. I definitely see what people mean. It is absolutely ramping up right now. There's a lot of forward momentum going on, which is great. I love to see it. These last two episodes have ended on pretty hard cliffhangers. Like we never got to see the aftermath of Dazai torturing that girl. We don't know what happened to Demon Snow Girl. We don't even know how Octagawa's fight ended. Like so, every different plot point hanging on a cliff. But you know what? That makes for some exciting TV. And if you're excited for me to react to the next few episodes, let me know in the comments below. And I will see you guys next time. How's it going, everybody? We're back watching Bungo Stray Dogs. 
and happy new year. You know what they say, new year, same everything else. That's not entirely true, we are in a new backdrop, I'm still on vacation, so I'm currently at my girlfriend's apartment, with her dog cowering in the corner and my girlfriend upstairs, tolerating this. But just because you guys are rudely interrupting my vacation and degrading my will to live, doesn't mean I'm not excited to get back into the swing of things. So let's get into it. If we plowed the land, we could grow a nice orchard here. Shall I capture the girls? You'd just end up ripping their heads off if we used your ability. I'm calling it right now. Lovecraft's ability has to be tentacles. How could you not give a Lovecraft-inspired character tentacle powers? What else would it be? Racism? Why don't we use mine instead? Beg your pardon? Beg your sweet little pardon? Who is this? This is the Grapes of Wrath guy? No chance this happens in Grapes of Wrath. This dude is way more grapes than wrath. This dude's more grapes than man. Is the book actually about grapes? I was always under the assumption that it was not. Actually, this could be a fun game. I've never read Grapes of Wrath. So we're gonna see if I could discern what the book's about based on this character's powers. That must have been scary. Apologies, my ladies. <laughs> Tell me. Do either of you know much about grapevines? I have a feeling I'm not gonna win this game. Here's my current guess. <laughs> Is it about slavery? I was under the assumption that the grapes were metaphorical, <laughs> but now I'm not so sure. This guy looks like a southern farmer, and he just said milady, so I'm gonna guess it's about like a southern grape plantation? Does that make sense, or do I sound like an idiot? Thanks, Sarah. Look, I know very little about grapes, and even less about history. I'm not entirely confident on this one. Do either of you know much about grapevines? What they do is, they seek out other plants to attach themselves to, and then graft their shoots together. Oh, this dude heard me and said, here comes your grape lesson, son! All I need is a little favor. I have a really large family back home. Every time we have dinner, it feels almost like a war zone. Does this guy need a... Date for Thanksgiving dinner? What is this favor? I'm sorry if I gave you the wrong impression. The work's a bit seedy, but the pay itself is quite good. <laughs> ha! Seedy. Because of the... That's good. <laughs> That's why Kunikita's the best character in this show. This dude's like, I use my vines to manipulate the foliage around me. Once I've tapped into their DNA, they fall completely under my control. And Kunikita's just like, yeah, I use my gun to manipulate this bullet into the back of your head. You remove any means of attack. Dopo poetry! See, this guy's like, I've disarmed you. What are you gonna use to attack me now? Bitch, another gun! Junichiro, use your ability to hide! Oh, yep, there's the tentacles. Watch this dude just be a bunch of squids inside of a trench coat. That's why Kunikita's bullets didn't work on him. What else can I do? I'm borrowing your sister for a bit. <laughs> What are you going to do with Naomi? Oh no, don't piss off the guy with the completely non-offensive ability. What are you gonna do, buy another hair clip, sweetheart? That's strange. Hasn't the driver noticed us by now? No way! You know what? Fair. Don't fight in the middle of the road. At first I was gonna rag on Janichiro for just getting lucky here, but if anything, they're all lucky a truck hasn't come sooner. Do we look like part of the road to you? I like how he just thinks this guy's a terrible driver. Like, he has no idea Janichiro's the one causing this. He's just like, Jesus, Japanese drivers don't give a fuck! How unexpected. Do you know where they went? I can't sense them. I'm surprised you can sense anything from the neck down the way your head's twisted. I'm sorry. Yo, hit that kid. What, are you gonna just stand there and see if she has any abilities? I, I think she's got some abilities. This kid looks like the Soul Eater Moon. The world's better without her. So, what do you want from me? Doesn't this gun tell you what we want? Yeah, but you not pulling the trigger is sending some mixed messages. I mean, take Gein here, for example. I remember when you were only this big. You were such a dainty little lass. Uh, don't 
change the subject. Oh, hold up. We got an undercover cutie in our midst. All right, Gein. You know what? No. All right, Queen. <laughs> what is this? He has razor blades taped to his arm. Oh my god. We did it. We found the edgiest character in anime history. I get it now. They're perfect. Everything about their aesthetic is perfect. I'm surprised this character isn't on the shirt of every emo 8th grader in America. Along with an Invader Zim hoodie, some fingerless gloves, and a red plaid skirt over some torn fishnet leggings. You know, what am I talking about? It's 2023. Make that a Persona 5 hoodie. He has the most vile gift of them all. The ability to control people's minds. Oh, come on. That's not the most vile ability. What about Rompo's ability to remain employed despite being an insufferable prick? However, even when this event is triggered, only a designated receiver is affected. In order to be targeted by Q, that person has to hurt him. Oh, whoa! That's why he's covered in razor blades. Oh, that's actually sick. I, for some reason, I thought he did it because it looked cool. So... You know, I don't know what that says about me. It'd be kind of cool, too, though, if instead of razor blades taped to his arms, he had, like, needles half-pressed into his skin, so that whenever he bumped into somebody, it just, like, fully stuck in. Once again, some very concerning things coming out of my mouth here. What I really look forward to is breaking you! Remember how you made me suffer? Soon you're gonna feel the pain, Mr. Daza! Nice, I love this kid. You know the second this train takes off, he's gonna whip out his PSP and start playing Danging Rampa while listening to Pierce the Veil on his ginormous cat ear headphones. Hello, young one. <laughs> you alone? Why are you here? I agreed to make a little deal with Mr. Dazai. Why do I feel like I skipped an episode? Like, I even checked. This is definitely the right episode. But, like, what happened to all the cliffhangers of the last one? What happened with Chuya? How did Dazai torture this woman? What happened to Nathaniel Hawthorne? Not that I care. I feel like a whole arc got resolved off screen. You need to get out of here, Dazai. Right now. Tell everyone at the agency <sighs> that their lives are in danger and that they- I don't think he heard you. Been waiting long? <laughs> oh my god, always with the tiger hands. How about you get a new move, beast boy? Such a predictable reaction. How dull. Oh look, now you got me agreeing with F. Scott Fitzgerald. That was a really nice kick. I'd say it was worth about ten grand. Oh god, you never want the villain appraising your attacks. I'm right back to where I started. Hold it. Hmm? <sighs> Oh, let's go! I love when Kyoka gets involved. Name's Kyoka. <laughs> what a barbaric display! You just kicked the shit out of Atsushi. What did she do that was crossing the line? She is approximately 14 years of age. Take any necessary precautions. Tell me, young lady, how old are you? 15? Oh, well, carry on then. <laughs> oh, whoa! Right on the money! I used her rubber bullets so we don't seriously hurt her, but it will sting like hell. Yeah, man, you be proud of that shot. That was what- Mark Twain?! What do you mean, Mark Twain?! Mark Twain just sniped a little girl! I love how this show will just have some badass show up, swinging around katanas, and then just be like, You really think you're prepared to defeat me, Shell Silverstein? Give it back! I'm ready, Mr. Melville. Understood. Oh, hello, Herman. Looking like a real confidence man with that ascot and beard. I'd like to get a peep at his Polynesian life. Oh, what, you wanted Moby Dick jokes? What do you think I am, some kind of hack? It's been a while, my old friend. I know we've only just met, but allow me to give you some advice. That's so hype. So what, in this world, Ahab caught the whale and turned it into a Gundam? Oh. Here you are. A dachshund. Uh, no thanks. That is the most faithful this show has ever been towards one of its authors. That is exactly what Lovecraft would do if confronted with this situation. One, two, three! There! God, this kid is hardcore. Now, show me, mister. Show me true madness! Well, you came to the right guy for that, kid. In critical condition, she may never wake up. It should have been you, Hawthorne! 
a dachshund. Yeah, you keep working on it, buddy. This, like, whatever arc is going on right now has without a doubt been my favorite part of the show so far. Watching all of these American authors have silly interactions with each other has just been a delight. Oh my god, I pray that by the end of this arc, Lovecraft learns how to make a dachshund. We are looking for a particular book. A book? That's hilarious. Of course they're looking for a book. I'm surprised this hasn't come up sooner. It's said to be impervious to any amount of firepower or type of special abilities. Someone with a gift foresaw that it would be found sealed away here in Yokohama. Please tell me they're looking for the Spiderwit Chronicles. That's not improbable. If it it's the description... This is our emergency plan. We call it the Yokohama Incineration Operation. Yeah, you know, I would have expected a slightly less tacky name from one of America's famous authors, but whatever. It's not like I ever asked to have this ability in the first place. So why do all of these terrible things have to happen because of me? Hey, who's the one going around with razor blades taped to their biceps? Don't give me this whole I didn't ask for this shtick. Nobody asked you to wrap your hands in barbed wire. All that's left for me to do is destroy this doll. Wait! Hey! I give up! The agency and I will help you accomplish whatever it is you're after! Hey guy, I bet that gun's a lot more effective actually pointed at Atsushi. Have you ever been tortured with a hot iron poker? You have absolutely no idea how much pain and agony I went through to get these scars! She's got you there, Atsushi. Your skin burns every time you move. When were you tortured? What, at the orphanage? How am I just now hearing about this? All you ever do is complain about the orphanage hurting your feelings. I didn't know they actually beat you. And then, you can rescue me from this place someday. I'll be waiting. Ooh, somebody's got a little crush on the were-tiger. More like when, tiger. More, more like when you're getting under my covers, tiger. All right then. If you have a moving target and you need to blow it out of the sky, just leave it to me. Why is Mark Twain like a master marksman? Wait, no, th that, that can't be the reason. No way it's because his name is Mark. So how's our tiger boy doing? He passed out from the blast. At this rate, he'll be dashed to pieces for sure. But weren't you given the order not to kill him? Way to not even attempt to make this guy look anything like Mark Twain, by the way. Have you guys seen Mark Twain? The dude looks like Jack Frost. He looks like the Norse god of shaving cream. It's you. Of course. Oh nice, Atsushi's having his own little Naruto moment here. I'm alive? Are we still pretending that Atsushi isn't immortal? Like this is so not surprising. I thought it was agreed that Atsushi is like objectively immortal. Tahazai. It's dangerous here. They'll shoot at you from above! I don't think they will. <laughs> nice, Dazai's here to wrap everything up. How convenient. And that is episodes, you know, wh whatever and whatever of Bungo Stray Dogs. These were definitely the best two episodes I've seen in a while. Not like, <laughs> in the whole grand scheme of my life, I mean, of Bungo Stray Dogs. I know this is like, American bias. Um, but it definitely has gotten more fun now that I recognize the authors. I never thought that that would actually be, like, a factor in my entertainment value of this show, but it is very fun and silly to, <laughs> to see Mark Twain try and snipe Atsushi out of the sky. That's cool. On top of that, things are just, like, revving up. I like that there's this, like, three-way power struggle going on right now, and apparently... Uh, the detective agency is about to link up with the Port Mafia, which is cool. If I had to give, not, not even a grievance, but I'd be more excited about the Port Mafia teaming up with the, uh, detective agency if the power system in this show was a little more interesting. Because there isn't really, like, a power combination that I would want to see out of these two groups, you know? Like in Naruto, right? Naruto's a great example. In that show, if like, you know, the good guys and the villains were teaming up, there's so much potential for sick combination jutsus to happen. Whereas here it's like, I don't know, maybe I'll be pleasantly surprised, but the best I could think of is maybe like Octagawa giving Atsushi's tiger some like cool shadow armor. 
or something. You know, I can't really see how, like, Chuya and Dazai can work together very well. I can't see how, like, Kunikita can contribute a ton to, like, Chuya's ability. But, you know, that's not even really a complaint. That's just, like, wouldn't X be cool if Y? But, no, I'm very excited about where Bungo Stray Dogs is at the moment. And I gotta catch up fast, uh, considering that season four, I guess, just came out. Oh, we got a movie to do. We got another season. We got a lot. But let me know what your thoughts on these episodes are in the comments below. I'll be there replying to your comments. See you there. And I will see you guys next time. How's it going, boys, girls, and squirrels? We're back absolutely tearing through Bungo Stray Dogs. So just remember, if you end up liking this video, make sure you leave a like and a comment on it. It really helps out the channel a ton. I have no extravagant intro for this one. I'm just, just excited to watch this show. It's getting good. It's getting really fun. So let's get into it. Any other time I'd be up for having this conversation with you, but not now, please. What happened to the energetic young hero who just helped save this town from the brink of destruction? God, finally, this show's going back to its roots. We haven't seen a character wiggle their little tush in the last, like, ten episodes. You know, I'm, I'm just glad this show hasn't lost what made it special. Since the guild is now our biggest threat, we decided to- Wait, 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 I am totally lost here. First of all, why are you the one arranging this meeting? Um, because he's quirky and weird. This agency practically runs off quirkiness, and the Port Mafia is powered by silliness. And by that math, Dazai's the perfect person to spearhead this plan. How are you feeling today, boss? Doctor, tell the board this is an order. How am I feeling? What? Is this not the voice of a man in his prime? I don't care how many of our own need to die. Just kill them. Just kill them all. Kill them. Kill them. Kill I hear you loud and clear. Oh wow, we got a real Jamie Lannister situation here. <laughs> The boss has succumbed to illness. Yeah, he came down with a bad case of slit throat syndrome. The most common symptoms being a giant gash in the neck and finding a bloody knife in the pocket of the man who last spoke with him. He left behind a will entrusting me with his position. Whoa, is this guy a Kool-Aid man? Was he made of juice? Every last fluid in that man's body just drained instantly. It's been four years. Do you happen to remember the coat that I gave you, Dazai? Of course. I had it burned. Are you trying to break my heart, Dazai? Because it's working. These are my thoughts. At the very least, I would like to propose a temporary truce between us. Yeah, good luck. Dazai's been hurting this guy's feelings from the minute he introduced himself. Have you ever read the works of Schelling? Hmm. Or are you more familiar with Kissinger? Henry Kissinger the author, or Henry Kissinger the nunchuck-wielding assassin? Because it could go either way in this show. Or... Does this imply that all these characters are still authors? Like, is Mark Twain an expert hitman and a Nobel Prize winner in this? I thought you had discarded your katana. You really haven't changed at all, have you, Fukuzawa? And you still haven't outgrown your obsession with scalpels. Look, there are two things I know to be fact in this world. Geico can save you 15% or more on auto insurance, and Katana beats scalpel every day of the week. Look, they even have to have this guy all turned around and twisted just to gaslight us into thinking that you can have a Katana at one dude's throat and a scalpel at the other without it being absolutely ridiculous. Dr. Mori. You still carry on like a little girl. Oh great, now you got him excited. Was that supposed to be an insult? You know this dude loves little girls. This from the man who thinks he can communicate with cats. Oh, now that's an insult. Damn, that one hurt me. Afraid that I would aspire to take your position. That one day I'd run a knife across your throat. Just like you did to your predecessor. Okay, but to be fair, his predecessor was a literal sack of bones. That was a mercy killing. You know what? Sack of bones wasn't right. I meant bag of blood. Mm -hmm. Advance payment is the essence of trust. Are there aliens now? Tonight shall mark their reunion. Let me set one thing straight. Did Chuya just arrive on a meteor? What are you, a symbiote? Yeah. Canceling ability. This is such a drag. Hey, don't be stealing my lines! Hey, you're both ripping off Shikamaru. Yeah, well, you're no ray of sunshine either. Only thing I like about you is your taste in shoes. Huh? You do? Oh, wait, that's adorable. I love the idea of Dazai just casually making Chuya's night with unprovoked compliments. Like, you know Chuya's gonna go home after this and be like, Huh, guess you're not such a screw-up now, eh, Chuya? <laughs> Yeah, as if. Are you? Oh 
you hurtful bitch! That was so mean! And for what? There he is, the Sleeping Beauty awaiting his savior. Wouldn't have gone with Sleeping Beauty, but alright. Yeah, chill, Dazai. He's like 11. This shoulder has been stiff as of late. Perhaps I have been working too hard? Oh, oh my god, easy fix to that. Quit breaking your own neck. So all you gotta do, just quit breaking your neck. All of your chiropractic issues, solved. Hey! <laughs> you okay? Yeah. No, you're not. What happened back there? You're right. I think he broke all of my bones. That's why I'm laughing. I mean, he broke all of them. There are no exceptions to my disabling ability, which leaves only one possible answer. It's not a gift at all. What? Yo, I told you, it's the old squids in a trench coat routine. My special ability controls the gravity of those I touch. It's time for a nap, Octopus. Oh, take a snooze, Octopus! Of course. If I don't get to you in time, you might die. I'll leave the decision to you. Really? You're gonna put the ball in my court? Really? You're gonna put the ball in my mouth? I don't know, I'm just saying things right now. Granters of dark disgrace. You need not wake me again. Is it just me or is this thing, like, totally harmless? Lovecraft turned into Cthulhu's dildo like two minutes ago and hasn't moved an inch since. What am I even looking at right now? That right there is the fully realized form of Chuya's gift. Yeah, no, I think he was talking about Mount Squid in the background over there. You really think he saw Chuya turn a little red and was just like, God, Kate, what am I looking at right now? Like he's the penguin from the Batman movie? Holy God, what are you showing me? Come on! Doesn't matter, because there's no way to destroy Lovecraft from the outside when he's in that state. The outside? So does that mean he's vulnerable if he's attacked from the inside? Way to pull the dumbest slip up in human history. All you had to do was not say his one weakness. Not to mention, this was completely unprovoked. Alright, Shuya. Finish him. I like how they kept hyping up Dazai and Chuya as this, like, unstoppable combo. But Chuya's, like, the actually powerful one and Dazai's just his off switch. That's like calling Deku and Eri equals. Chuya just spirit bombed this squid monster, and Dazai's power just takes away people's ability to have fun. <sighs> I told you to stop me as soon as it was over. He did. He, like, literally did. Stopped you immediately. Like, right after you defeated the monster. Just who in the world are you people anyway? <laughs> the bad guy's enemy. That's all. Just a humble bounty hunter, ma'am. To think I'd receive a challenge from the guild. Hopefully this'll stave off my boredom for a bit. Oh god, this is a Rompo episode? Are you the mastermind who issued a challenge against me? <laughs> it's been a long time, Rompo. A Rompo and Edgar Allan Poe crossover episode? Oh boy. Strap in. This has the potential to be my favorite episode of the series, or the most insufferable episode of any television I've ever seen. For the past six grueling years of my life, I have endured the crushing shame of being bested by the likes mm -hmm. of- Yeah, could you speed this up please? You're boring me to sleep. You know what's weird? Why didn't they have Sir Arthur Conan Doyle be Rompo's rival? Why didn't they have Rompo be Sir Arthur Conan Doyle? He's already dressed like Sherlock Holmes. Our protagonist is awakened by a strange sound. <laughs> oh, what the hell? Did you guys trick me into watching an isekai? This is not what I signed up for. This show can't just switch genres halfway through. The windows were sealed making it impossible for anyone to have entered or left in such a manner. Two doors and a matching key. Oh, well, this is fun. For Rompo, at least. Not so much for us. So far, this show has been terrible at setting up mysteries the audience can plausibly figure out. So, like, I'm not even gonna try to attempt this one. They never give you proper clues, and then once you figure out how it happened, it's like the most nonsense explanation possible. How was the killer able to leave the room after the murder? You're sitting there struggling with all these questions. Why don't you use your ability already? 
I've lost my glasses. Oh great, so Velma over here is useless then. Then how about the two of us investigate the crime scene and try to piece together what happened? Get real, that sounds so lame and boring. I don't want to do all that tedious work. That stuff's for suckers. Hey buddy, maybe next time instead of chewing her entire asshole out, what if you just said, I don't feel like doing that. I was gathering firewood from the kitchen to use in my fireplace. I was in the library looking up the famous curse of this mansion, Pluto the One-Eyed Cat. Yep, totally normal alibis. Each one more regular than the last. The killer then used a string to pull the key under the door and returned it to his pocket. He cut the string, collected it, and disposed of it. That's pretty clever. I like that. That's good. Are you a complete moron? <gasps> what? No? You are a moron. The key's too thick to be able to fit under the door. Not only that, but the corpse was on his back and the key was in his hip pocket. I need to have the glasses the boss gave me. Or are you trying to say that he lied to me about all of that? Wouldn't it be better to know that you're actually smart rather than needing magic glasses? Why are we still keeping this lie? Also, I do just want to mention again, I love Rompo's voice actor. I need the glasses the boss gave me! Once you're in the book, it's all but over. You'll never figure out who the killer is or how they did it. I like how this dude's just sitting in a room alone, staring at a book and monologuing to absolutely nobody. Oh wow, I just got hit with a wave of self-awareness. And now I'm sad. If I understand the killer's MO correctly, locking myself up in this room will surely put me at risk of being their next victim. Ooh, very smart. She's gonna lure the killer out. Good idea. <laughs> Oh yeah, good idea, doofus! Oh, what if she dies and gives Rompo her glasses? I'm grateful that I was invited to the agency and met you all. Take the glasses! <laughs> so Rompo's arc in this episode isn't learning that he doesn't need glasses to be smart. It's that he can be smart with any pair of glasses. Baby steps, I guess. Impossible! You couldn't have solved the mystery! I'll admit, it was quite an impressive piece of work. You just made one mistake. Giving you access to glasses? That was challenging me. But actually the glasses, right? The locked room had nothing to do with it. The protagonist killed the victim and the author deliberately omitted that part of the narration. You know what? Honestly, that one's fairly predictable. That's fair. I should have guessed that one. That, like, <laughs> the show did an okay mystery there. I'll give it points for that. That wasn't as ridiculous as some of the other mysteries have been. The mansion itself is actually a rest stop attached to a massive elevator in space. What? I'm detracting all points. Past, present, future. This show gets no points. There was no evidence of this. This is insane! You know what? No, I should have guessed this. After all, the mystery was crafted by the father of science fiction himself, Edgar Allan Poe, Oh, that Poe can't write a single story without throwing a spaceship into it. You know what? On that note, what a fucking hack. If the twist of your mystery is that it actually takes place in an insane, futuristic space prison, you've written a bad twist, Poe. It's just... It's just what? I'd look really stupid if I turned out to be normal now. Oh, buddy, you do look stupid. But did you really think that we wouldn't have countermeasures in place to deal with your ability? Of course I knew that! Oh yeah, real intricate countermeasures you got there. You just wrapped her ghost in grapevines. That's all you ever do. Dude standing here like, bet you didn't see my grapes coming. We saw your grapes coming. Grapes are your whole personality. Whenever Kiyoka is in danger, she looks for an escape by hurting or even killing the person responsible. What? That's all any of you do! This is an action anime. You guys solve all of your problems with violence. <laughs> oh, hey, Octagawa. Haven't seen you in a while. I forgot you were in this show. This ship is set to crash in less than an hour. If the Moby Dick is your special ability, shouldn't you be able to stop this? Atsushi, the man sitting in a chair smoking a pipe. Does he look like he wants to stop this? Nobody looking that cozy in a chair ever wants to leave the chair. You think he'd still be on this whale if you wanted to stop it? We need to abort the operation and retreat immediately. We are continuing as planned. What? 
You have to take control of the Moby Dick yourself and stop its descent. Oh yeah, just learn to fly this whale in the next hour before it crashes into Japan. That's fine. Everything's fine. I'm sure your ability to transform into a tiger will be real helpful here. Finally. I've tracked you down, Where Tiger. <laughs> Haktagawa! God, will you just die already? You think Atsushi shouted your name because you're sworn rivals? He did it because you're a pain in the ass, and it's a nuisance to see you here. And that is episodes 21 and 22 of Bungo Stray Dogs. That truce didn't last long. Also, this show is so messy and weird, isn't it? Maybe I'm, like, missing things because I'm watching it in, like, content creator mode, but every episode ends with, like, uh, the resolution of a fight, but then you don't ever see what happens to the characters, and then the next episode, everyone's just fine and back to normal. It happened when Octagawa fought Hawthorne, it happened when Chuya broke into the detective agencies like Chapel where they were hiding. But this last episode, Dazai beats Lovecraft and Grapes of Wrath Kid, and then the episode ends, and then the next one, the Grapes of Wrath Kid is just like, back with all of the other people under Fitzgerald. Like, the show just feels so weirdly disjointed, and the episodes are both like, connected and not connected with each other. And again, this could just be another case of me missing things because like, 50% of my brain has to focus on coming up with jokes for the show. Like I said before, Chuya like, busted into where the detective agency was hiding, gone for an episode, shows up again riding an asteroid. It's very weird, it's very like, Power Rangers-y, where people just fight and then like, leave the scene of the incident, letting everybody just go and be free. But regardless, I'm still having fun, there's still like, a lot more going on right now than there was in the beginning of the season, so I'm liking that. I haven't really decided which season I enjoy more yet, I still like the villains of this one more, but I liked the focus on Atsushi and the little ghost girl more in the season, in the first season. But we still got three episodes left to make that final determination. Make sure you guys leave a like and a comment below if you enjoyed this video, and I will see you guys next time. How's it going, boys, girls, and squirrels? Who's excited for today's triple feature? Seriously, who's excited? I hate doing these. Is it you? Are you excited? Two episodes of video is like the perfect sweet spot for my energy levels. All right, I'm like Rock Lee over here opening up his eighth gate for every video. Th there's only so long you can maintain that. You think it's easy finding something to scream about for an hour and a half straight? But Bungo Stray Dogs decided it wants to end its second season on episode 25. So now my vocal cords are at the mercy of this show. So let's get into it. What are you doing here, Octagawa? I've come here to kill you. I like how Octagawa is shocked you would even ask him that. He's like, why am I... I'm here to kill you. I mean, come on, we're, we're sworn rivals, right? Also, logically, Octagawa has 0% chance of winning this fight, right? Atsushi beat Octagawa last time, and then basically mastered his Were Tiger ability since. But Octagawa hasn't gotten stronger at all. So now it's a rematch between Octagawa versus a stronger Atsushi who already won the first time. Little Octagawa still has a habit of going rogue. How annoying. How are you guys gonna get mad at me every time I insult Octagawa when you've literally got the show's characters referring to him as Little Octagawa and annoying? Even the show agrees with me. Why can't you guys? Dazai's been listening in. He's on the other side of this device. He wants to talk to you. <laughs> what have you done? Oh my god, that's hilarious. You see what I mean though? That whole plan literally hinged on Octagawa being a pick me girl. You made the right decision. Any cook that isn't aware of your distaste for cream cheese should simply perish. Oh my god, Zelda's actually in this? Oh, that's so exciting. Anyone who's been keeping up with this reaction series knows that one of my favorite running jokes is roasting F. Scott Fitzgerald for plagiarizing from his wife's diaries. You thought I was mean before? Imagine my wrath when his wife actually shows up. If you want something to be done correctly, you've got to do it yourself. Oh my god, the irony. Tell me, boy, do you know how much the Moby Dick weighs? <sighs> it has a total mass of 29,000 tons. Atsushi, this thing's 45 minutes away from crashing into Japan. Don't just stand there and listen to his fun facts about the whale. If we have to fight over the control terminal, let's keep things simple. We'll both run towards it on the count of three. Run towards it now! What's Fitzgerald's ability? Making people stand there and listen to him yap? I'll just have to 
make a dash for it and get out before he can react. Ah! Oh, never mind. I forgot his ability was a sweet flying knee. Need an explanation? <sighs> for however much money I spend, the amount of power I have rises in turn. I need a deeper explanation. How is this fair? This dude's over here using a literal pay to win mechanic. Also, it sure is convenient this guy's rich considering his ability. I still have no idea how people are given their abilities. Like, do they get them at birth? Or does this guy have this power because he's rich? You would be Aqua, no, Octagon, Oticon? No, you got it right the first time. That's our boy Aqueduct over there. Shut up. My main course will be the Were Tiger. I would like my dessert to wait quietly. I think he's calling you a snack, Fitzgerald. 500 grand. This is the one time Daddy's credit card has successfully gotten somebody out of a fight. Andrew Tate must have a shrine dedicated to this guy. Huh? He's gone. Power my ass! You want to rephrase that one, Atsushi? Power your ass with what? because it sure does do a lot of wiggling. This doesn't even count as abuse. Oh God, you know your life sucks when even Octagawa feels bad for you. You couldn't be that naive, could you? No one can grant you that affirmation. No stamp certifies that you deserve to live. Says a guy whose sole reason for living is to get a smooch from Dazai. Here you are, my little stray dogs. Why was that kind of sexy? There, the cargo elevator. <laughs> Do you guys see Octagawa fly in like a thrown sock puppet? Fitzgerald's ability is out of my league. My only chance is to figure out a way to steal that terminal from him. What, did you guys get thrown in time out? Why are we staring at the corners here? So that's how it is. This is all about Dazai. Have you always been- In love? Because yes. That's enough hide and seek for today. In a matter of minutes, the Moby Dick will enter into an irreversible trajectory. Yo, let's go. Just like an immediately hype visual. Atsushi and Octagawa are about to team up to fight American novelist F. Scott Fitzgerald on top of a flying mechanized Moby Dick in a thunderstorm. Yeah, no, I think that warrants a let's go. Monic? Don't want to protect your face at all, though. That is sick, though. I love that the armor is like a bunch of flowing scarves rather than like stiff metal or something. <laughs> Yo, let's go! Dude, the tiger just turned into a wear Atsushi. Also, this music? Crazy hype. I never even commented on the music of this season, but it's way better than the genuinely awful music of the first season. This track is sick. This is so hype. No, you're in my way! You're, uh. Oh, this cause of Dazai will Dazai my ass! Quit bringing your ass into this! Dazai my ass sounds too much like a request. You know, things have been getting pretty serious between us lately, so I was thinking, uh... You know, maybe tonight you Dazai my ass for a change. She couldn't bring herself to accept our daughter's death. To this day, she hides in a fantasy that our daughter is studying abroad in London. To this day, she hides in a fantasy that she could one day be a brilliant author. But no one would read the ravings of a damned mad woman, so I had her locked up, you see? And it was for her own good, too. That's also true. F. Scott Fitzgerald had his wife institutionalized. Of course it is. The words from your past are fundamentally meaningless. They do not dictate who you are now. Oh, what? look at them getting along. Beast beneath the moonlight. Rashomon, demonic armor. Dude, this is so sick. This is peak Bungo right here. Like, the Atsushi and Octagawa stuff has always been the best content in this show. But your anguish isn't yours alone. What should one do when what they want to be isn't what they're best at? Dazai, we got three minutes before Japan gets nuked by a whale. Could you give her the abridged version of this motivational speech? Can I escape my memories? Is it possible? How about can I beat up the guy using the literal power of money? Let's ask that question, huh? How about we focus on kicking this guy's ass and worry about arcing later? Go die! 
Where, tiger? Oh, fucking big fist, baby! That's what I'm talking about! Screw all this emotional development, Atsushi just needs a big old fist! If he stands back up, I don't know what I'll do. Well, what are you gonna do? He still has the control terminal. Yeah, it's about what I'd expect. Who is this? It hasn't even been a minute since they beat the main antagonist. How are we introducing a new one already? You'll need to plan your escape as well. I can't. I'm a prisoner here. Absolutely the hell not. Is that what you thought? You thought we were doing this? Because no, we aren't. This show is not about to have Kyoka die inside of a giant mechanical whale right now. That just isn't about to happen. My ankle is chained to the floor. I wouldn't be able to make it to the evacuation system. What is this room? There's a computer inside of a suspended wooden box that Kiyoka is also chained to? Why is the computer inside of this prisoner box? Listen to me! Thank you. Dude, somebody call her dumb little phone and have her ghost cut her out of this box. Please call her dumb little phone! What a little fool. If she hadn't embraced the hope of living in the world of light, she would still be alive now. Atsushi, you're gonna hit this guy, right? Applies only to members of the agency. His ability allows an individual gifted greater control of their own ability. Who is dealing out these incredibly specific abilities? Kyoka was able to pass the test and become an official member. Right before the impact. Oh, let's go. Using Demon Snow's blade, I was able to cut the chain and escape. So I'm back. Let's go! All ghosts and no phone, baby! Do you think I'm strong? Let's see now. You did help take out Francis, but you look like you're about to fall over from exhaustion. Does I please just kiss this guy already? Does I? I know we just saved the city, but do you think I'm strong? You have become strong. <laughs> oh my god, did we finally kill Octagawa? Did his spirit leave his body now that his unfinished business is complete? Oh, is your ability not making a giant robot whale? I'm sorry, I, I, I just assumed. It is finally fulfilled. Still kicking, huh, Lovecraft? What are you gonna do now? I will scour the globe, training under the world's most prestigious masters, until I finally perfect the art of creating a dachshund. Just who was that guy? Does it really matter? It matters a little. I'm, I'm pretty sure that guy was a demon. Okay, but this means the show can't keep tricking me into thinking Kyoka's about to die. The show pulls that move like twice a season. She should be safe now. W wait a minute. Oh, Rambo. I brought over the new piece you asked about over the phone. What? You can't just slither on in here, Poe. You work for a crime syndicate. The Joker can't just walk into Gotham PD because he misses Batman. Uh -huh. Hey, Ed, yeah, you changed. Glad you could make it. Damn it. Why is Rompo my favorite character? <laughs> I'm quite grateful for that, but I prefer the women in my life to be under 12. <gasps> you what? Don't start, or I'll sew your mouth shut. <laughs> that claim's gonna need a bit more than a don't start, lady. Such a display reflects my sworn diligence to the people. Mm. I'm ready to begin. Oh, it's a Kunikita episode. I swear upon my very soul. I will complete everything on this masterful agenda! It's an episode about Kunikita getting his chores done. I couldn't have asked for a more special season finale. Isn't it weird that anime seasons love having, like, an epilogue episode? Like, I feel like so many anime I've seen will have their, like, big climax happen, like, 
two episodes before the season finale. And the last two will be like weird winding down episodes. Like I feel like My Hero does this, Demon Slayer season two kind of did this. It's just weird to me that anime wouldn't want to end on their most like climactic moment. Your phone's ringing. Yay, come on. Hey, Junikita. What are you so annoyed about? You're the one who made that your ringtone. Who is it? The same craftsman who made that special notebook of yours. The one and only legendary notebook artisan. If this whole episode is Dazai trying to ruin Kunikita's day, I'm gonna burn the writer's house down. Whether you choose your agenda or the master artisan, you'll be happy. It's practically a win-win. This man is a complete monster. Where's my lighter? Tell him that he has my utmost love and respect. Ah, you've got some major issues. <laughs> yeah, and I'm about to become one of them. Yeah, you yeah, guys like my soju Molotov. You're Kunikita, and you said you're part of the armed detective group or some pompous crap like that. What do you think about helping me beat up that dunk bucket? I don't know if I really need to see Kunikita team up with this small female Chuya. And what skills would a kid like you have exactly? I practice karate every day. I work out my mind and body to fight for justice. I've trained for a day like this. Those are more qualifications than Atsushi had. <gasps> what have I missed? What else can I do to annoy Kunikita to death? What? <laughs> He's not done tormenting him yet? Why is Dazai going through this irredeemable villain arc? All Kunikita Kunikita wants to do is massage his little OCD brain by getting everything on his dumb little list done. Another bomb? This device is likely set off by vibrations. Yo, controversial opinion? This train station sucks. They only ever enter this train station when it's about to be bombed. It's like everybody who visits this place turns into a demolitionist. <sighs> Why are you a bomb now? I knew it was you. I arrested you when you were building an illegal explosive to try and blow up your school building two years ago. Probably should have given this guy a longer sentence than two years. Be strong. Discipline yourself and do what is right. To this day, I still can't get your ideals out of my mind. Doc, that's some pretty generic advice. Sure he wasn't just trying to move the conversation along? Where did you get off telling me that? Weak? So weak? That's the crap advice you spout to someone who's already so weak. He's become a criminal. Nobody's ever told you to be strong before. He was just being polite. Special ability. Dopo portrait! Oh, that's so hype. Get absolutely duped, kid. The signal to disarm the bomb set on the track is the same frequency as the one to detonate the bomb attached to that girl. You know what? This is the exact same situation as the train bombing in the first season. How is this the second episode involving a train bombing and a little girl with a bomb vest strapped to her? What are you doing? I'll be right here alongside you until the very end. Oh, dopo poet gentleman! I'm sure that someone like you, who's only focused on your ideals, wouldn't have a girlfriend or wife. But if you ever changed your mind... You know, you might be a little young for Kunikita, but don't worry, kid. I know a very handsome mafia boss that would be more than interested. Of the current 58 conditions of my spousal plan project, you fail to meet 31 of them. So I must decline. What? Oh, thank God. Ooh, I got nervous for a second. And compassionate toward the weak. A man born to be a leader. Yup. Who else could it be? But our very own Kunikita. Yo, I want the detective agency's boss to die so soon. I want to see Kunikita running the shit out of this agency, man. And that is season two of Bungo Stray Dogs. That's right, I'm gonna keep on pronouncing this show two different ways. Apparently it's pronounced Bungo, but I like Bungo. Season two? way better than season one. Slow start, for sure. I don't love flashback episodes in, like, anything. But the villains are a lot more interesting and fun, mostly because I recognize the authors, so I had a good time with that. But even without that novelty, I still think that the action and story in this season is a lot more engaging than in season one. It is weird that we almost, like, lose a lot of Dazai's original charm in this season. Like, they almost entirely drop the suicide shtick Dazai had going on in season one. Do you guys notice that? Like, entirely gone in this season. Atsushi takes a little bit of a backseat, just like in season one, 
I always hope for more Atsushi. I just love his character design. I love his power. I like his voice actor. I think he's very fun. The structure of this finale was so strange though. The first episode I reacted today was like all build up to the climax, like really strong episode. Then the second episode is like three minutes of the final fight and then like a long party celebrating the end of the season. And this last episode was like a weird side mission with Kunikita. So that's a little strange. I am glad I watched these like all in this chunk together. Like if I was watching it week to week, I think that would have been a little disappointing. But yeah, regardless, great last season. Uh, up next is the movie. Let me know in the comments what you guys thought of this video and I will see you guys next time.